Hey there, how's it going everybody? So we've covered onboarding, we've covered product data. Now I wanna take you through a simple way to set up and manage renewals in Salesforce. So the reason we wanna do this is because there's lots of automation and reporting that we can take advantage of in Salesforce uh, in setting up renewals. Uh, it helps us keep in sync with other teams. You can build workflows with finance or sales, uh, uh, customer success, obviously, if you are doing this. Um, and I'm going to take you through how it all sort of ties together. So the first example would be automatically creating a renewal upon a new booking uh, opportunity closed one from sales. Uh, super simple uh, flow automation. Uh, from there, I'd want to take you through how customer success can use renewals uh, and opportunity, the opportunity object to do forecasting or planning around anything that is upcoming for renewals. Um, I want to show you how to set up automated reminders for any contracts that are uh, due for renewal in uh, X number of days, so say 90, 60, 30 days, uh, you could get an automated reminder sent to the CSM. Um, there's lots of other stuff that you can do around that. And the last two things that I want to tie in with this are how you can actually use renewals to build uh, reporting for leadership by looking at things like revenue movement when it comes to new bookings, upsells, downsells, and churn. Uh, and lastly, I also wanna show you how this can tie in with a workflow uh, for finance using the contracts object. Now this is a lot of information, so I'm gonna try and do it, I'm going to try and do it in a step-by-step -step fashion. And we're going to start by looking at a simple data table here that we're going to try to recreate in Salesforce, uh, which is just looking at renewals that are upcoming. So in this example, there's four contracts that are coming up for renewal. You can see the date that they're renewing. You can see who owns the contract, who the contact is at the other company. Uh, you can see when the contract is actually ending. And just by setting up the renewal object, or sorry, the opportunity object in a way, that you can see all these fields is a simple way to give you the data you need to manage renewals. And we're gonna start with doing this. As we go further into the series, we're gonna get more advanced where we can see things like ARR changes in subscription, where you can separate out uh, new bookings from upsells or downsells or churn. So you can actually see what is really driving revenue at your company. If you wanna get even more advanced, you can break it into a monthly recurring revenue uh, chart like this, which so many leadership teams and investors ask for, but not very many people know how to make this. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. And lastly, I'm also going to tie this in with contracts and how to build a simple contract workflow setup. Uh, so let's get started. And before we get into the actual Salesforce build, I want to show you a couple examples of dummy data. So the first data set we're going to look at here is a company called Org1 that has three contracts that it's gone through. So it's gone through the sales new booking, which is here, the first row. I'm going to zoom in here. Then it's gone through a renewal that had an upsell. Uh, and you're able to see what got renewed and what was upsold. And then you can also see here another renewal that is upcoming in January, which is in about four months. and it is in the future, so this is really what customer success should care about because it is a contract that is coming up for renewal. The other data just sits there as a way to uh, to feed into your reporting, your historical reporting, so you can see what has happened over time with this account, and you can combine it with other data sets to see what's happened over time with all of your customers. The other example we have here is a churned account. So this customer was closed in February and they were closed lost in February 2024, one year later. So you can see the new booking and then the churn. Then we're going to look at another example of a downsell. So here this has gone through two renewals and a sales new booking. Uh, so originally they were closed in March 23. They were renewed but at a lesser rate. And we can see here the renewed amount and the don't downsold amount. And then we can see here the renewal ARR the amount of money that is up for renewal in March of 2025. And then when we combine everything together, you'll get a chart that looks like this, which is just showing you the movement of revenue over time. 
because I don't have that much data in here, the dates aren't continuous. So just be aware. This is saying February 1st, 2022. They closed this much revenue. In January 2023, there was another booking that was closed. Then in February, there was a churn, which was likely this account here. In March of 23, there was another new booking. One year later, January 2024, it looks like there was a upsell, which occurred. And then the year, two months later in March, there was another renewal and a downsell. And then here we have two accounts that are up for renewal. Again, this is what CS cares about. Everything else is really what uh, leadership cares about, the reporting on a high level. And if you were to filter this report for just CS, all you'd have to do is change the date here. So our date is after today. And now we're looking at the opportunities that are up for renewal. So we have one up for renewal in January and one in March. This is what CS should be managing. They're going to have a lot more contracts like this, but the way that they would typically look at it would be to look at contracts up for renewal in the next 90 days or so. Um, so that's just to paint the picture and to give you some background on this. So in the next video, I'm going to take you through the first part of this, which is just building a simple renewal management system and that sales automation to automatically create a renewal for you. And we're going to start just by creating a new record type to manage renewals. And we're going to also create a few custom fields. So I'll leave it at that and see you in the next video.